Okay, good afternoon everybody. So today I will be talking about my research update on uh, chemical and biological control of uh, coconut rhinoceros beetle in Hawaii here. So as uh, you guys know that uh, coconut rhinoceros beetle, or we simply call it CRB, has been here since uh, 2000, uh, December 2013, confirmed here on Oahu. And it was uh, first confirmed on Guam uh, probably six or seven years ago. And uh, it was native range is in China and uh, Southeast Asia, those places. And we got that, uh, uh, you know, uh, back in 2013. And as you can see from the, the picture that, uh, you know, I'm showing a female adult here, and it has a relatively smaller horn, but a fuzzy end. But if you compare, you know, the male versus the female, the, the male has a bigger horn and uh, the male does not have that fuzzy, you know, hairy stuff at the end. So that's how you can tell female versus male uh, side by side. So uh, the primary hosts for the CRB, they are uh, coconut, uh, co coconut palms and also, you know, oil palms. And plus they will also attack dead palms, even bananas, sugar cane, and those things. That's why we want to present, prevent uh, CRB from going to the, the mainland of the USA. Uh, so this is a brief life cycle showing you, you guys, you know, how, you know, the CRB, uh, the entire life cycle is. Essentially, we do not call it a pest at the larvae stage because at larvae stage, it does not attack any living tissues of plants. Uh, but at adult stage, it will fly on top of the trees and uh, bore a big hole into the, through the developing fronts of the palms. And then that caused the damage, internal damage already there before the leaves actually open. When the leaves open, then you can see this uh, typical V, the, the center image, the V cut shape of damage. That's a very uh, typical CRB damage. And the entire life cycle can be very long because this is a, apparently a very big beetle. Uh, yes. So, so after we've confirmed the CRB on Oahu in 2013, we have uh, received the USDA funding. And me and uh, Mike, we went uh, together to several you know, few trips, essentially to a lot of places, uh, Guam, American Samoa, Palau. And we want to learn what they did to control CRB over there, what have they done in terms of research or control strategies. So as you can see on Guam and Palau and American Samoa, very severe uh, damage like that. And uh, to the right, the picture you can see, that's my favorite CRB damage picture. You can see how many times that one single leaf from has been through, gone through by a CRB. You know, either the same individual or, you know, multiple individuals. Very severe uh, infestation over there on Guam as well. Yeah. So, uh, since then, we have a very big effort, collaborative effort among USDA, you know, uh, Department of Agriculture here in Hawaii and the UH Manoa military and other, you know, entities that we work together to control CRB. And we are still in the eradication program. So in terms of uh, research, <coughs> my lab is mainly dealing with, uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, uh, systemic insecticides and the biological con control agents using entomopathogenic fungi and uh, entomopathogenic uh, nematodes. So uh, for this slide, I basically provide some very brief uh, background information on the previous uh, chemical control research we did. We did this research for about three years, from 2015 to 2018. That was actually before we established the CRB colony in the quarantine facility in Gilmore, the fifth floor. So at that time, we relied on the uh, trap caught CRB individuals to do the experiments. That that is a big limitation. So then we were only able to run small lab assays one by one and multiple, but we did a lot of them. And essentially, the I, the key message we found from those multiple lab assays was that uh, imidacloprid and acephate, they were very effective in the lab assays. So then we moved forward with uh, a field trial for three years, about three years, from 16 to about 19. Uh, so then we did that uh, at uh, Iroquois Point. We used uh, 125 coconut palm trees there. and the, after three years field work and research data, we were able to say that imidacloprid was relatively, was giving us some control effect in the field trial. So then we move forward with additional research. Uh, this slide shows you the relatively recent lab assays we did. We basically, now we know that imidacloprid and acephate, they were relatively effective. But then we want to see whether, you know, we can identify additional insecticides, systemic ones that can be used to be part of the IPM program. So we included additional dinotefrin and uh, abamectin. So you probably don't see too much details with these uh, slides, but the key idea, the key message is uh, uh, now we have identified four chemicals, dinotefrin, imidacloprid, acephate, and abamectin. They were all very effective in lab assays. 
So with this uh, relatively new uh, lab assay results, we moved forward with a brand new set of uh, field trials at uh, Tegla McLennock, of course. We used uh, 70 pumps over there, and we split the entire trial into two halves. One is a preventive trial, and uh, the other half is uh, the curative trial. We used uh, four treatments, imidacloprid, dinotefrin, acephate, and uh, abamectin in these uh, ongoing trials right now. Yeah. Okay, so here is uh, I show you several pictures that uh, you know how we collect the data. We basically uh, did the same treatment type with each trunk injection, and we uh, go there every month. We collect the, the damaged data, and also we collect the fronts from the trees. And we have I will show you guys what we do with the fronts we collected. Basically, I have the, my team, uh, Mason, Philip, and uh, Kenneth. They were you know all on the ground to collect the data uh, for this project. So the the quick, yeah, so. Here, this is the data, basically one of the key data we collect. It's basically the monthly uh, evaluation of overall damage and the top four front damage. So we basically give a rating system from one to five, one to four, essentially, and we rate all the ongoing you know, uh, damage caused by CRB on those 70, uh, 70 trees in the golf course. So here is, uh, I will show you uh, some of the latest results. Uh, this, you are looking at the preventive trial result. So remember, this is preventive means uh, we, there was almost uh, no or minimum CRB damage to begin with. So uh, as you can see, after one year treatment, we were able to uh, maintain the very low CRB damage, especially under the immunocorporate treatment. Then we are looking at a curative trial right now. So cur for curative trial, we selected 35 palm trees. Uh, there was existing CRB damage to begin with, and then we treated those trees. Um, but uh, the effect was not very significant. However, as you can see, still, uh, immunocorporate was one of the better treatments uh, among the, the four treatments we tested. Um, but there are indirect indications that uh, you know, the overall treatment is working to some extent. For example, we, uh, you know, oftentimes we found dead beetles on the on the ground where we treated those trees and uh, once they're basically the beetles they once they got uh, they fall on the ground they're essentially they're taken care of by mowers a lot of times so you know um they they there's no mortality or paralysis and then they basically they're they're done uh, and uh, for, uh, remember i collected the, the fronts uh, every month you know we bring them back to the lab and we feed those uh, France treated with uh, chemicals in, through the injection, and we see we look at whether you know those beetles were negatively affected. Either uh, they were paralyzed or either they are killed by those chemi uh, the fronts, and they, that that did happen. As you can see from this particular sl slide, that all the chemicals, especially imidacloprid, it was able to essentially ne very much negatively affected. Uh, the, the CRB in the lab assays as well. So those are the quick summary of the chemical control side, but also my lab also works on the biology control side. So for biology control research, we mainly focus on two groups of biocontrol agents. Those are entomopathogenic nematodes and entomopathogenic uh, fungi. So for nematode uh, uh, research, we basically try to collect uh, local occurring strains from Oahu and we basically screen them one by one and see whether we found we can find any effective strains uh, from the, the nematode we collected and uh, this shows you the procedure and we bed the nematode out using uh, mealworm and we test the, the nematodes one by one one strain by one strain uh, against the crb so it was uh, not uh, not as good as I was expecting. So the best result we had in terms of nematode, in terms of controlling the CRB was about 35%, which is relatively on the low side. So then uh, we kind of, you know, we did not really give up on the nematode work. However, we had much better luck with uh, the entomopathogenic fungi work research. So as you can see from the next slide, so we focus on two groups of uh, entomopathogenic fungi, Bavaria and uh, Matarism. So we basically collected those uh, fungi from the soil samples and, and we extract them. And we have, as you can see, we were doing this uh, preliminary research at the PQ, uh, at the Sand Island facility. And you can see a lot of you know, small vials and uh, you know, cups. We were doing the preliminary screening of those 80 or 60 you know, uh, strands we collected. And out of those 80 strands, we have, uh, out of those 60 strands, we had about uh, four or five strains that give us very good results. So we focused more on those four or five strains with a refined experiment. We now the, at this uh, further re refined experiment, we were doing them at the incubators. We provide you know, consistent uh, temperature control in terms of the, the lab assays. And as you can see from this slide, we had a 
very good mortalities, many times over 80% or even 100% using the very effective strains that we identified. So we also brought up these two uh, small scale field trial. We only did this field trial for once at this time because there's a lot of limitations. We had to use the controlled breeding site because CRB is still a quarantine pest. We cannot simply place them in the wild and run the experiment. However, with this limit, with this small scale uh, field research, we were able to show that uh, they have, we had about uh, 40% mortality in the field research, which is uh, not as great as the lab assays, but it is uh, uh, definitely you know, uh, useful in terms of uh, a part of the IPM program. So we also tested the commercial product, which is a Bavaria strain, and it did show very well, very good control effect in the lab assays as well. So uh, to quick recap everything I talk about, for chemical control, we identified four chemicals that they were very effective in lab assays, and they did show some effect in the field trials, directly and indirectly as well. And for biological control, we tested uh, uh, entomopathogenic nematodes and uh, entomopathogenic fungi, we had a better result in terms of uh, entomopathogenic fungi. So then we basically right now we are focusing more on those fungi strains we collected, uh, more so than the nematodes. So the next step, we will you know, continue with the lab assays and the field trials with uh, all these chemicals and uh, biocontrol agents. And uh, the ultimate goal is to provide uh, several components to control CRB as a part of the entire you know, IPM program. Yeah, that's uh, the goal. And here, the last couple of slides, I'm showing the my lab website, and also my I uh, need to acknowledge all my all my uh, lab members, former lab members, and the current students and postdocs who contribute to all this research work. Without them, I cannot uh, have all this data to show you today. And also uh, acknowledge all the funding agencies and the collaborations from the golf course, from UH, uh, other UH faculty members, uh, Department Ag, folks like that. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention and any questions. I can address.